What is up, Madden NFL 25 gamers? We are here and we are bringing back a series. We have talked about bringing it back for a while now. I haven't been able to do it. And uh, we're also talking about a couple of other ideas uh, thrown around in the channel here. Uh, some things moving forward that I'm considering doing. But one of the ideas that we are bringing back is our Embrace the Debate podcast. And uh, we are going to try to get it on uh, available on iTunes and stuff like that. So you guys can be looking out for that. Uh, for right now, we're just going to put it on YouTube. Uh, but the podcast is a little bit different than a video and that it's more based on the commentary than it is necessarily based on the video feed. And uh, that's why we like to use podcasts because it's a little more flexible. It can be a little more uh, still get the information to you guys, uh, but also have the flexibility to only use the audio. Anyways, guys, today's video, we are talking about the top five uh, draft takeaways uh, top five teams that performed well in the draft for Madden 2015. And we're talking strictly Madden, how this relates to Madden. And it uh, should be a pretty good video. should be a pretty good podcast today. And um, anyway, uh, without further ado, here we go. Number five, uh, the Cleveland Browns. With the addition of Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel, 86 speed, 88 agility, 90 acceleration. Uh, take a look at his throw power rating here. 80 throw power. Wish it was a little bit higher than that. Uh, the accuracy stats aren't perfect. But again, the speed, the mobility, adding that mobile quarterback, huge for Cleveland. Uh, because they do have uh, Ben Tate now. They also have uh, Fozzie Whitaker who has 92 speed. Both of those backs will be fine for them in the coming season. Chris uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi as I call him. Very good fullback. He can catch well. Um, now, as far as offseason, with all the problems circling around Josh Gordon, don't know if he'll be in Madden 15. I'm assuming he will be. If he is, that's what solidifies Cleveland, and that kind of puts them in that number five to number three category uh, in terms of their offseason. Uh, but they grabbed Andrew Hawkins from the Bengals, which is huge for them because now they have even more speed at the wide receiver with uh, Hawkins and Benjamin. They still have, um, I think they did get a, a guy in the draft as well if I remember correctly. Um, I can't remember who it was. But anywho, um, these guys are loaded now on the offensive side because they still have Cameron and Barnage and their offensive line, guys. Let's just talk. Their offensive line is one of the best offensive lines in the game. Their only real weakness is their right guard. Um, as far as defensively, they did lose Dequell Jackson. Uh, but with what they did in the draft in terms of gritting that other corner, Justin Gilbert solidifies them now as one of the best secondaries in the game. Even though they lost TJ Ward, they get they they did bring in Dante Hitner Whitner. They still have Joe Hayden re-signed to a five-year deal. And uh, with their secondary, you can use your control of the free safety to get away with it, and that makes them one of the better secondaries in the game. As you see, their linebackers are still really effective, and uh, they're just going to be a really good young team to use. I can't wait to, to use these guys. Um, anyway, Barkevius Mingo, of course, one of the best user players in the game with that 87 speed, 87 agility. So overall, guys, just one of the best teams. All right, so number four, our team that did just a little bit better than the Browns in terms of the draft. And, oh, oh I'm talking more, of course, overall offseason. But I think the Minnesota Vikings did a lot for their team this offseason with the addition of Teddy Bridgewater bringing in, once again, a somewhat mobile quarterback uh, who has that, uh, that acceleration and agility. Uh, not as quite as mobile as Christian Ponder, but he has a little bit better of an arm with that 83 throw power, better accuracy, um, and, and, of course, the better throw throw on the run rating. But Teddy Bridgewater is going to be a nice addition. Uh, Christian Ponder still has pretty good statistics, uh, but again, it, it's going to depend on your your obviously what they're going to do with the final ratings. I don't know what they're going to give Teddy Bridgewater on speed, uh, but I do hope it's up in the 80s area uh, because this is going to make them one of the best backfield tandems uh, with Adrian Peterson, the 99 that he is, the great running back, uh, which brings me to my next point next week. Uh, get ready for next week for our next Embrace Debate. We're going to be talking about the top five running backs in Madden NFL 15 uh, as far as what we've seen in Madden 25, how that translates to Madden 15. Can't wait to talk about that. I can't wait to dive into the ratings and really talk about what the ratings mean. And also, that brings you to another point. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter, uh, guys. I've uh, been trying to get tweet out a lot more lately. We're going to be talking a lot more uh, in the coming weeks about uh, how to stop the run. I think that's probably the number one question that a lot of people have. And so we're going to be talking about that uh, throughout the course of the next couple weeks. But anywho, uh, back to the draft here. 
Um, I really do like what what the Vikings have been doing this offseason. They they add um, they add Teddy Bridgewater. They have this speedy guy here from Florida State, Rodney Smith. But I think I really like what they have now at the wide receiver with Cordell Patterson. They keep Greg Jennings. They keep Jerome Simpson. All these guys have really good speed. And uh, really their only weakness offensively was the quarterback. And now you have Teddy Bridgewater, Christian Ponder to kind of compete for that job. Uh, I don't think Josh Freeman w- w- was a really good decision. He's kind of a head case. And so I am glad to see him gone and see what they can really do. They also, guys, Chase Ford. I'm telling you guys right now, he's a very good Madden gym with that 80 speed at tight end, 6'6". I'll lob it up to him and Kyle Rudolph. And those guys are really good. Uh, moving on to the defense here, you see they keep their uh, le- they keep Brian Robeson, but they do not keep uh, – Jared Allen, which is kind of shocking that they would finally cut ties, but they do have Everson Griffin, who in my opinion is is just as good as Jared Allen. May not be a, as good as far as run defense, but Everson Griffin does have the speed and pass rush ability to get the job done. Also, um, they bring in uh, they, they did cut ties finally with Kyle Williams too, uh, but they bring in Linval Joseph, who I really like because he's a he's a big beefy guy who can really clog that hole similar to the way Pat Williams did back in 2011 when the Vikings had one of the best front fours uh, in the game with Brett Favre on their team, and that was that was back in those days. Their linebacking core, I think, got a little bit better. Uh, I think Michael uh, Mauti here is going to do some 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 damage for these guys this season uh, with with losing Aaron Henderson. Uh, but I don't know that he's going to be the answer. I want to see what they're going to do in their future long term uh, for their middle linebacker. That's probably one of their only weaknesses. But what we can see here with the addition of Anthony Barr, I want to talk about that. This guy is is a phenomenal player uh, out of UCLA here. He's Like I said, look at this, 6'5", 255. And this is what I really like for them because with even though they lost Jared Allen and Kyle Williams, you add this linebacker so you could move Desmond Bishop to the middle, have Barr and Greenway on the outside, have Joseph, you could even maybe – put uh, Joseph, you could put, uh, of course, with Griffin and Robinson, and then you only need one more guy, and as you see here, you have a couple of guys that are kind of filling players for that defensive line, and their secondary is really good in terms of Madden uh, with their 97-speed Robinson, 95-speed Cheryls, and then these two guys here, Xavier Rhodes, of course, a big-time pickup out of Florida State, very good rookie, uh, but one of the things that I'm really interested to see is, is how much the Vikings get played. I think they're going to be I think they've done a lot more for them than a lot of people see this offseason. That's why I want to put them just a little bit over the Browns, mainly just to kind of spotlight some of the things because the Vikings are probably my favorite team going into 2015 uh, just because of Peterson, Bridgewater, and then the addition, all the additions they've made defensively. Uh, Harrison Smith is a great free safety. We already know this. And then Sanford, of course, is a heavy hitter. Uh, but another thing I like to put is and I put like put like – uh, excuse me. I like to put Andrew or Kurt or even Robert Blanton. Both all these guys are, are fast safeties uh, that can get the job done back there. And of course, you can use or control them to make them better. Uh, if we're going to take a look here, see if we have any uh, hidden gems here with the hit power. Uh, as you see, Andrew's got 81 hit power. I think C- Sanford has like like 88 or something. Let's take a look here and see what he's got. Uh, he does have 88. So you know you have some hit power that you can get by with here and uh, very good deep. Very good team overall, especially with the speed at wide receiver and the addition of Teddy Bridgewater, but more importantly, uh, the addition of Anthony Barr, the really good linebacker uh, out of UCLA. Anyways, guys, uh, so number three team, uh, didn't like, I didn't like, I was kind of torn on this because the Bills, I really liked the additions that they made over the last two years. Um, but what I really wanted to, what's interesting to see is that they picked up the back out of Philadelphia in the draft. Not in the draft, but but they made a trade in the draft and p- go ahead and picked up the backup Bryce Brown, who's a pretty good back uh, in terms of uh, a versatility. He'll be a good backup for Spiller. Uh, you have Jackson where you can run inside. Spiller's great. We all know about how he how well he performed in the opening moments of last season. Um, and then we have this is what I'm interested in is their wide receiving core uh, with the addition of Mike Williams out of Tampa. But what I really think that it's going to really kind of be a big thing for them is the addition of Sammy Watkins. Now they did lose Stevie Johnson, and we're going to talk. We're going to get back to that in just a moment here. Uh, but Sammy Watkins, uh, along with uh, T.J. Graham, Mark Luis Goodwin, and then I think they still have um, those tight ends. But 
I think that this receiving core could be one of the best in the league this next year, depending on how these players develop uh, as far as growing a year Madden-wise, see what the ratings are. Uh, but I think that this is going to be a really good team next season uh, with Tony Moyaki, and I really like Chris Gray with that 88 speed down there at tight end. Uh, their line is is kind of just is what it is, but I also really like their defensive line. I like Alan Branch, I like Mario Williams and Jerry, Jeremy Hughes. Uh, Jerry Hughes I like to put on the left end, and then I like to put Branch at, at the defensive tackle, but you see, uh, I think that the the kind of big departure, if you will, is Corbin Bryant. I didn't want to see him leave. Or, or not Corbin Bryant, but uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was their left end over Allen Branch. But what I like to do is I like to put Williams at defensive end. I like to move Branch to defensive tackle, and I really like to use Williams and Hughes in combination with each other on the outside pass rush, uh, depending on what package I'm running. But I really like the Bills front four. Um, the linebacking core, I really think they have one of the most underrated linebacking cores with Ty Powell, 81, 81 speed, 84 strength. And if we go through these ratings here, you see he doesn't have the best hip power, but then you look at his power moves at 82. His block sheds at 72. That's not terrible. Um, and you see him and Manny Lawson in combination can be deadly together. But I love that zone coverage rating of 75. They add Brandon Spikes from uh, New England, who's really good. But I really like Kiko Alonso here. Uh, this guy's a very good uh, player. And what he has really good for him is his zone coverage rating, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's 85 zone coverage. That's one of the best zone coverage ratings in the game for a linebacker. It's a lot better than most corners in the game. And that's why I love this guy, the front seven for Buffalo, uh, Nigel Bradman. Now, one of the key uh, losses that they faced was they lo the, the loss of Jay Bird. But I think they solidified themselves especially offensively, uh, where they are kind of weak. I love their corners, what they bring to the table with their corners, uh, with the addition of Corey Graham. Uh, going through here and see kind of some of these uh, bad rookies here. we got a 92 speed, uh, but they do have a lot of hidden gems at corner. Free safety, they're moving Cersei over to free safety, but I think I'm going to go ahead and probably say I like Duke Williams over Cersei for the zone covering that he has. Yes, you see he has 81 zone coverage and 76 man. 81 is kind of the threshold. Once they have the 80, I'm kind of feel pretty good there from there. But uh, I love Aaron Williams because he has man and zone abilities. See almost 80 in man, 82 zone. Uh, so pretty good squad there, the Bills. And that's why I think, they, I think they're number three because I think that Sammy Watkins added a lot of value to the Bills. Because if we remember, Stevie Johnson wasn't very fast. He just wasn't. Um, and Sammy Watkins kind of adds a little bit more of a breakaway speed. Uh, to that team, uh, along with Graham and Goodwin, but Sammy Watkins also has the catching ability that Graham and Goodwin don't. I just see that 82 catch in traffic, whereas Graham and Goodwin only in the middle 70s. And you see, I think that's going to be huge. I think his catching ability, Sammy Watkins' ability to be not just a burner, but also be a very good overall receiver is going to help them and, and really improve them because of the addition of Mike Williams. So that's why I like the Bills at number three uh, in terms of their – I feel like their draft helped them out more uh, than some of the other teams. And this is – we're talking about the top five – teams you want to use in Madden 15 now because of the draft. Not necessarily the top five draft teams. Okay, Just top five new teams we want to see. Okay, So I didn't really know. Don't think the Broncos are really fit in. We already talked about the Browns. Uh, the Bucks. I don't really want to talk about them, but one team I do want to talk about a lot is the Houston Texans. Now, I've got them at number two, and I think they would have been at number one had they been able to pick up uh, Teddy Bridgewater, but they weren't able to. But you see, so that's the only kind of weakness is the quarterback. And I think that if you guys check out the ratings here, Casey Keenum, if I remember right, has pretty good stats all the way throughout here. You see decent throw power, decent accuracy, decent – uh, decent deep accuracy, actually really good deep, ac deep accuracy. And I think this is something that we kind of miss, him and TJ Yates both. But you see you get a little bit of mobility there with that 72 speed and, and decent quarterback overall. You know, not perfect, not a hundred, you know, not, not something that you're going to uh, really depend on like an Aaron Rodgers, but I think he does help them. And I think that we kind of overlook him when we're talking about just ratings. We're not talking about outside on the field. We're talking about just ratings. I think that the Texans are decent enough at quarterback to get by. Um, the, of course, the addition of D Dennis Johnson here with that 90 speed. I think I really like what they've got here at the running back. With Aaron Foster, I don't quite understand uh, 
you know, kind of these backs here. I, I really would like to see um, a little bit more. I really would have liked to see them pick up uh, the back out of Oregon, uh, DeAnthony Thomas. I really think he would have been a really good uh, piece to plug in there at Houston, but they didn't end up doing it. Greg Jones, best fullback, one of the best fullbacks in the game. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, receiver, they're going to be good for like that power kind of pro set, two wide receiver set. Uh, but they do have a speedy guy here, Sean Martin. Garrett Graham, I really like him. I've liked him for a while because of this right here. He's six foot three. And I believe his catch in traffic it was pretty good. Yeah, it's like 83 catch in traffic. Really pretty good for that. Again, that we're talking that pro set personnel uh, that, that Houston's going to be running a lot of zone blocking schemes. But this is where I can't wait to talk about the defense. J.J. Watt on one side. You've got Jadavion Clowney on the other side. And then in the middle, you, you have... Now, see, this is what I'm thinking. Terrell McLean is going to go there. He's going to be your kind of big boy defensive tackle. I think that this guy here, Jarrell Powell or Poe or however you say his name, can be that kind of plug-in defensive tackle. Uh, you also have, um, you know, Luis Nix, the other rookie that picked up out of Notre Dame. Uh, there's all sorts of things I think that they can do to get by, but I think that the Texans now have the best one-two combination in the game with J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney. Cannot wait to see what they're going to do. Uh, Andrew Luck's probably uh, you know, shaking his boots right now, thinking about the pass rush that has come to fruition in Houston. So can't wait to see what they're going to be doing uh, in Houston this year. I think their defense becomes one of the best just with that pick alone uh, because of how effective their four-man pass rush is going to be. Um, and I really like what they've done at the linebacking core with Cushing, Sharpton, Reed, and merciless all these guys can play their ratings may not be that good but i'm telling you from experience i've had great success with all these guys they picked up hazel out of cleveland who is a matin gym with that 85 speed and that 89 acceleration uh trevardo williams i think that's going to be an interesting pickup can't wait to see what we're going to do there i think he's a really good Madden gym a lot of Madden gyms on the on the texans linebacking core uh and i kind of want to get through but uh you see uh i still like their corners uh like i said i don't need a whole lot as far as corners go i mainly look at the front seven because i don't think that the ratings are as are as valuable when you get to the corners. I think they are valuable, but I think when you're talking about routes and, and kind of having routes where anybody can be man, I think that's what a lot of gamers base their game on. So I really like to have three guys that can cover decently in man, and I really like to have two guys that can cover decently in zone. And you see that's what the Texans bring to the table. Uh, with the addition of Chris Clemens, I really like this. Uh, they have Chris Clemens. Now take a look at their safety combination here. You see this rookie, Jawanza Sterling, another Madden gem for the Houston Texans, a team that's known to have very good gems at safety. And uh, as you see from last season, Shiloh Keel. Let's take a look at these guys' hit power. If I remember correctly, they had really good hit power last year. Yes, as you see here. Kendrick Lewis and Shiloh Kilo are going to be very good. Even Chris Clemens. All these guys have great hit power. Going to be a great team, uh, especially in that back end. I think this is one of the best defenses in the game right now. And then, of course, you have these two guys here. Another, Again, more and more hit power, as you guys see. You want to scroll through all these rosters. You want to check out the ratings. And I think you will find Houston's defense has some of the best hit power next to the 49ers and their offense with Arian Foster, Andre Johnson, Casey Keenum. I really would have liked to see the Texans pick up Manziel or Bridgewater. I think that would have been even bigger of a boost. Um, but I don't think that the Jaguars have enough firepower like the Texans do to compete. And that's why I say the Texans over the Jaguars for the number two spot. Um, and so what do we have for number one here? I did like what the uh, – real quick, let's talk about what the Steelers did. Uh, in, in one draft, they got younger everywhere. If you take a look, we got Sham, Shamarco Thomas from last year, of course. Kind of, He's going to be groomed for that position. Um, they got Mitchell from the uh, from the Panthers, who's really a really good pick. Take a look at him if you get some time. They're just kind of kind of highlight the team here. I guess we'll just highlight the Steelers. Uh, but I really like this pickup, Ryan Shazier out of Ohio State, a great linebacker, great pickup, and Jarvis Jones, of course, from last season. What Pittsburgh is doing is they're rebuilding from the ground up. They're building from their linebacking core, and uh, we talk about this all the time. Build through the draft, not through trades. Uh, we saw that with the Redskins back when I think it was George Allen, who was the head coach, brought in all these old guys that could never win a championship. They had all the talent in the world, could never win a championship. But people who build through the draft have infinite success. 
Steelers are one of those teams, and I'm loving this pickup with Ryan Shazier. Uh, Vance Williams from last year. I believe it was last year when they picked up Vince. Very good linebacker being groomed behind Timmons. Timmons still has a lot of years, too, to play. Uh, Sylvester, of course. We love all these guys right here. Uh, Chris Carter has got to come in. But I think what you're going to see is you have Whirlids, and they've kind of – they used to have Harrison – and uh, it was Porter, Harrison Porter. Now you're going to have Whirlids and Shazier. I cannot wait to see what Pittsburgh does with that combination there. Um, they've got um, McClendon is kind of young, but he's not as good as um, not as good as Hampton was. Kiesel's getting up there, and uh, they haven't kind of addressed it. I'm sure they'll do that next year. But what I love to see here, I love Hayward. He's been groomed for a long time, and I think he's going to have to be that Casey Hampton and um, excuse me, that Casey Hampton and um, what was the guy's name? Uh, Aaron Smith back in the day, back in like 05 for the Steelers, was a good, really good player. And I, I love what they're doing there. Uh, let's take a look at their tight end. Still got Heath Miller. Don't really know what's going to come of that. They picked up Lance Moore. He's kind of just going to be a, a filling guy. I like this pickup here. Marcus Wheaton got a lot of speed there. Going to be interesting to see what we can do with him and Kashif Moore uh, as far as speed wise, depending on how much catching matters. I love their backfield. LaDavion Bell, LeGarrette Blunt, and they have LaRod Stevens Howling. Love all that right there. Um, ben Rossberg is getting up there, too. And I wonder when Pittsburgh is going to start thinking of a replacement for him. Uh, see what they're going to be doing. But it's going to be interesting. Watch the Steelers, guys. Pay attention to what they've been doing in the draft. Uh, but anyways, guys, I want to highlight our final team, and then we'll get out of here. I know I kept you guys a long time today. But the team that I think has done the most for themselves as far as Madden, as far as offseason drafts, all of that in combination together, Cannot wait to use the New York Jets. Let's take a look at what they've done. So at quarterback, we all know they brought in Michael Vick. Michael Vick versus Geno Smith in Madden. It's not even a competition. Vick's got 90 speed to Geno's 84, 92 agility to 83, 91 to 83 acceleration. Take a look at his throwing stats real quick. Uh, Geno Smith, not three points less throw power. Geno does have better short accuracy, but Vick has better long accuracy and medium accuracy and better throw on the run. Just a better quarterback in general. They did pick up Todd Boyd. That's interesting. Uh, because I I've, I've always liked I liked him in college a lot, and you see he's still somewhat mobile. So they got mobile quarterbacks for days in New York. I cannot wait to see what they've got going on there. Matt Sims, I loved him. Uh, he's actually uh, uh, Chris Sims. I think it's Chris Sims' son. Uh, I remember Phil or not Phil Sims, not Chris Sims, Phil Sims' son. But I remember Chris Sims back in the day with the Bucks, and he was in a he was a good player too. But let's take a look. Obviously, running back. I think I argue. I would argue Chris Johnson. Better than Jamal Charles. 99 speed. 99 speed, 93 agility, 96 acceleration. He's just a burner. And firm in terms of Madden, guys, in terms of Madden, not real life. 77 catch rating. Just a great all-around versatile back. Can't wait to use him. They've got a power back in Chris Ivory. They've got Goodson and Reynard, two agile backs to back up Chris Johnson. Goodson has really good catch rating, really good acceleration. Just great team here. Like Hilliard's a really good fullback. Or, or, what the guy here, take a look at this guy, Tommy Bohannon, when you get a chance. If you take a look at his ratings, this guy might be one of the best fullbacks in the game. He's got 74 catch in traffic, 73 catch. Look at his impact block. If I remember right, that's 85 impact block. That is really good. This guy's a really good fullback. He's young too. He's going to be there a while. I think they found a really good, I think they're building a really good team right now in New York. Now this is where I get really, really excited. Take a look at what New York has done offensively. They picked up Eric Decker from the Broncos. They, re they keep David Nelson and Jeremy Curley. That's three guys who really have phenomenal catch in traffic. Let's take a look at their catch in traffic. 96, 87. Obviously, Curley doesn't have great catch in traffic, but what does he have? He's got the 85 route running, 87 catch. He's a slot receiver for days. You got these two guys on the outside. It's going to be a great year for New York, especially in Madden. Remember, we're talking Madden only. Jacoby Ford, 98 speed. This guy is Got wheels for days. Remember Madden 12, we used to use him in kick returns. This guy, 88 spec catch. Stephen Hill, 96 speed, 86 spec catch. Clyde Gates, 81 spec catch. And Greg Salas, got one of my guys, one of my favorite players on the Jets, 85 catch in traffic, 83 spec catch, 81 catch rating. Love the Jets receiving core. I think the Jets have one of the best receiving cores in the game. But let me know, who has, out of the five teams we talked to, who has the best receiving core? I think it's the Jets. I think the Jets have the best receiving core going into Madden 25. Look at what they've got. Three guys who have decent catch and traffic. They've got, and then they've got three or four guys who have really good spec catch. And 
they have big guys, fast guys. They have guys everywhere. These guys, they've got two regular guys in Decker and Curley. They've got two phenomenal catch and traffic guys in David Nelson and Greg Salas. And they've got three guys that can take the top off the defense. This team is loaded. Salim Hakeem, even 95 speed. These guys got, got, got guys for days. Oakland Raiders status. This might be one of the best offenses in Madden history. The only weakness is the tight end. But look at the look at the Madden gyms they've got. Zach Stubfield, James Cumberland, 84, 81 speed respectively. Look at the catch and traffic. It's not great. Catch not great, but the spec catch for Stubfield's great. Remember, they're both big guys. 6'7 at tight end. Going to be a great year. Let's take a look at the impact block for the Jets. And, I, guys, I'm really excited. I cannot wait for Madden 15 to get here to talk more about the New York Jets. See, they have guys for days with impact block. Their offensive line is one of the best in the business. It always has been one of the best. They actually picked up. It looks like here they picked up a, a new lineman here. And uh, But look at their line. Uh, we've got 90 guys. I mean, this is one of the better lines in the game. Let's take a look at their defense. Now, this is where it gets even more exciting because we talked about how explosive they're going to be offensively. Now, let's take a look at their defense. Muhammad Wilkerson, build team around him. Great, great, great defensive lineman. Sheldon Richardson, again, freaking, these guys are really good. This, this Sheldon Richardson, 72 speed, 88 streak, but this is what I want to focus on right here. If you scroll through here, 50 zone coverage. That is unheard of for a defensive lineman. This guy has all the all the tools. He's a, He is a system player. I will say that, but he's a very good one at that. Then you have these guys here, Harrison and Ellis. They have great block shed, 96 and 85. All of the Jets, guys, all of the Jets have good block shed. Let's take a look. Let me just, I'm getting really into this. Let me get show you. 86 for him. It's 97 for Muhammad. All of these guys can get off the block. All these guys can stop the run. These guys are phenomenal on defense. Their front four, easily one of the best in the game. Easily one of the best in the game. Linebackers, Quentin Copples, build a team around him. Look at the 80 speed, 82 strength. He can play defensive end, and he does for me. He plays my right end position in my depth chart. I'm going to talk a lot more about the Jets as we go through. 60 zone coverage for a guy who, look at what he does on the pass rush. 88 power moves, 80 blocks. So this guy is a defensive end playing linebacker. He has the flexibility, six foot six. He's got the speed. He's got the strength. He is a, a poor man's Jadavion Clowney, IMO, one of the best players in the game. Game right now, Antoine Barnes, Cunningham, and Troy Davis. All of these guys are, are system players. Hit power. Look at this 86, 84, 82, 78. 86 is kind of that kind of door, but I really like these three right here guys as backup players that play really well within a system. David Harris, Demario Davis, Madden Jim, Demario Davis. Look at this guy 87 hit power. Look at the zone coverage rating 72 zone coverage. You've got Harris who has good zone coverage. Davis is your user player. He's your middle linebacker. Harris is your left outside linebacker. And then you've got some you can do a lot with your right outside linebacker. I like Fugger. He's got 88 hit power. S. Gibbs talked about him in his twim show. But there's a lot of a lot of pieces here, guys. A lot of pieces that you could fit in here. Look at the corners. And this is where it gets even more scary. Look at the corners. You've got Milliner, 21 years old. Look at Wilson. Both of these guys are strong. They are strong. They are feisty. They are big corners. And look what they do. Their man coverage rating, if I can, I remember right, 85 and 82 respectively. Very good. And what I'm probably going to do, I'm probably going to put uh, Patterson in my number one, put Wilson in the slot, and then maybe have Dowling or something in the fourth slot. But look at these guys. Look at their press rating. 82, 90, 85 press. These guys are phenomenal. A lot of flexibility on the Jets' defense. Now, this is where it gets really sick. They add Calvin Pryor, the free safety out of Louisville. Now, take a look at what his projected hit power rating is. If I remember right, it should be pretty high. Oh, no, it's only 71. Oh, maybe I'm, th I'm probably thinking about the guy for the Niners. But you've got Jarrett, who has really good hit power. Look at this guy's projected. Uh, this guy's just going to be uh, average, but I think... I can't remember what it was that I saw, but this guy is going to kind of be a system player. But I really like the agility, the acceleration. But I obviously really watch out for Jaquan Jarrett. And then you have Landry and Bush here. The, really, the only weakness is the safety, but you can kind of make that a strength by making him your user control player. I probably would start Josh Bush. And it's going to be interesting to wait and see if they do anything about that safety position because uh, I think they probably like Calvin Pryor. Uh, and I don't know what his real man 15 rating is going to be, but this is just kind of projections. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm telling you guys, the Jets are going to be a phenomenal team in Madden 25. Easily, 
better than the Browns. Easily better than the Browns. I have the Browns at number five. That could probably be debated. They may be even as close to number two. All of these teams really helped them out with the draft. Uh, and then real quick, let's talk about Blake Bortles. I don't really like that pick. I'm going to be straight up. I don't really like that pick. Let's take a look at his throwing. Terrible throw power. Terrible... Yeah, just terrible throw power. Has, doesn't have the cannon that Chad Henney does. So, I don't know. Madden-wise, I really hate that pick. Um, oh, they lost They lost Jones Drew. I didn't even know that. Maybe they just haven't signed him yet. I don't know. I can't build. You just can't, I just can't think of that happening. Now, he does have some receivers to play with. I remember them signing. I remember them getting Lee. So, he does have a lot of receivers here. And they're young, too. So, that's interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the running back. I... I I don't remember anyone telling me that Jones Drew, their defense, looks pretty good, too. Huh. Anywho, let me see if I can find Jones Drew. I'm just going to search. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm, I'm kind of rambling on here, but I want to see what happened here. Raiders? Okay, that's, I've got to I've got to check that. I can't believe that. Is that, is that. is that real? Maybe I did this wrong if that's real. Let's take a look at the Raiders. I don't remember him going to the Raiders. I must have not been paying attention. Because you, you'd think you would hear about him going to the Raiders. Did, did he go in the draft? I don't know. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, leave your top five. Leave your top five draft teams in your order uh, and talk and, and debate with me. You know, what do you like about the teams I, I selected? What do you not like about it? Um, is there something you would change? Uh, would you keep it the same? That kind of stuff. I want to hear your guys' feedback. And uh, I really cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say about it. Um, as far as uh, future podcasts, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, the podcast should be in the link here. Uh, but real quick on the Raiders, uh, I, I really have not paying, been paying attention then. Um, let me take a look here at their depth chart. But on ESPN.com, they did get Jones Drew. Oh, my gosh. You know what? This is hilarious because I have a friend who was talking to me about how good the Oakland Raiders are going to be, and I was I was thinking they're not going to be that much better than they already were. But man, look at this! They've got a the only I don't like that they don't have Pryor. I don't think they have yeah they don't have Pryor, but do have Carr. Now what Carr has I believe he has the throw power right. Oh, it's only 74. I thought he had really good throw power. I'm all over the place. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about the Raiders later because uh, we are already at like 35 minutes. Um, but, oh, wow. I did not realize they had Jones Drew, though. And they kind of jocked him, though, in the ratings. Huh. That's interesting. They may have the best backfield in, in Madden 25. James Jones, Rod Streeter. Ooh. More in the slot. And I do remember this, guys. I remember that the Raiders had a really good... Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? Okay. We're going to have to cut the video because I've got to look at these Raiders right now. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. If you guys like what we talk about, leave a like rating and please share this on Twitter. That uh, will help me out. It gives me a lot of publicity. Also, if you have questions about this, please hit me up on Twitter at MadtenTips365. And then uh, as far as uh, top five, we'll revisit this a couple of – this is just kind of initial impressions uh, because I, I don't I didn't really realize that, that the Raiders had done so good. Um they they kind of flown under the radar because there hasn't been a whole lot of talk about it. Uh, but anyway, we will talk about that later on. Uh, but those are my top five. Remember, I really like the Browns. I really like what the Vikings did. Uh, I really like what the I really really like what the Jets did. Uh, I love what the Texans did. Um, and then who was that other team that I was talking about? Oh, the Steelers. I wanted to highlight them because they were. Oh, and I love what the Bills did. That's right. Uh, but I, look, I think there's a lot of open. I think there's a lot of open, a lot of uh, inter, interplaceable things. Uh, I think you could put the Browns easily at number two. Uh, now that I look at the Raiders, I think you could put the Raiders in the top five. Who are your top five? I just want to hear it, uh, and we'll debate. We'll talk about it. Uh, but as far as what I'm saying, uh, what I want to know about your top five. What is your top five Madden 
improvements. So what is your top five draft classes that improve Madden instantly? Uh, for me, it's the Jets. I really love what they did this offseason. Uh, and even with the addition of those two rookies, I think it's going to be really powerful to see what the Jets have in, have in store for us. So what's the top five offseason improvements that you guys are excited for for Madden 25 or Madden 15? Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you later. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the draft recap soon. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later.